Procrastination can be avoided, on the other hand, if you're procrastinating and not making a decision by setting a self-imposed deadline and writing it on your calendar. I'm not going to decide now. I'm going to let this cook a little bit inside my soul. I'm going to gather some more information. I'm going to watch the, watch the marketplace move, see how the, what rough the waters are and what's going on. And by Friday, two weeks from today, I'm going to make the call and just put it on the calendar. And when you wake up that morning, you'll be free and you'll be going, yeah, I think I, think I can make it. Oh, by the way, if I don't want to make it that day, I can purposefully move the date. But at least you've got something bearing down on you where you are go not going to kick the can down the road indefinitely. So you put a date on the calendar and that pops up on ding, ding. Okay, today's the day I got to make a decision. Am I going to keep this person? I gave him a little time here. I want to make sure it wasn't just me being emotional about it. And I, I, think, my initial, I think my initial thing was right. I think we're going to have to go ahead and deal with this. And, and I don't just put it off and put it off because of the pain. The pain that is inflicted with the decision is usually short term. The pain of not making a decision and letting things just languish is long term and devastating to an organization. Take time proportionate to the size of the decision. The more important the decision is, the bigger the impact of the decision, the more money is involved, the more people are involved, the more important it is, the more time you should take. And here's what's interesting. People do, they flip-flop this. They spend a lot of time deciding which flavor of gum to buy. And they impulse a new Porsche. You got that backwards. You want to spend a lot of time analyzing an expensive purchase. You want to spend a lot of time analyzing a five-year lease that you're in negotiating, that you're going to enter into on a building. That's a big deal. That's going to be with you for a long time. But don't spend the same amount of time analyzing copier paper. So short, easy, little baby decisions, make them close the loop, get that out of your life, that lowers your stress level and opens up your bandwidth to spend the proper amount of time on the big things. So make the little decisions quick and get them off the plate, get rid of the mosquitoes so we can shoot bear. Get after the big stuff. The bigger the decision, the more information you're going to need. Information is king. There's a saying, Roger Urey, who wrote the book Getting to Yes, talks about the negotiation for the ending of the war at Vietnam, the some peace talks that were done. He talks about the Camp David Accord, and he talks about several major negotiations. And one of his key things in any negotiation, it's the consummate book on negotiating, his key thing is he with the most information and he with the most patience in a negotiation generally wins. If you can sit back and let the thing drag out a little bit longer emotionally than the other person can, and you understand their side almost better than they do, you can, you can generally win that negotiation. And the same is true with decision making. If you'll slow down enough that you're very wise, and the more information you gather, obviously the more knowledgeable you are about the situation, the better the decision is going to be. If there's a way to minimize the risk, make each part of the decision bite-sized, make small parts of the decision to test the decision or to move into it gradually, that's an easier decision than, than biting off the whole thing. So is there a way to iterate this product? Is there a way to introduce this product to a small group? We're working on a, a, a product right now that we're in beta on and uh, getting ready to go into beta, or alpha, and then we're going to go into beta after the first of the year. And so we're going to start with a little group of about 300 people, and then we're going to go to about 3,000 people. And once we kind of get all the bugs worked out, then we'll take it all the way. Now, we've got a lot invested in it at this point, but before we go with several more million dollars of investment into it, we will have worked through the kinks, and we will have looked at this, the, we will have made the decision several times again to go forward based on the information we're gathering out of these alpha and beta groups. 
Scope of the decision matters. What are the financial implications of the decision? The biggest mistake people make in business, particularly small business, is they do a James Bond decision, I call it. In every James Bond movie, at some point during the movie, he is at the card table with the evil villain, and they're playing cards, and the entire, uh, you know, the entire planet, the uh, existence of the world as we know it, is dependent upon him winning this hand of cards, and he slides all of his chips to the center of the table. No one in the real world should ever do that. If your bet on this product line, this idea, this launch, is going to break your company and close you down, if it doesn't work, you shouldn't do it. You should make lots of mistakes in business, but they should all, all be course correction mistakes, not fatal errors. And a fatal error is when I put it all on the line and, and somebody then will write a book about that someday. Yeah, they'll write a book about how dumb you were. Don't put it all on the line for one deal, for one thing. Don't risk the whole thing for this one move. You work too hard to get to this point to lose it all on one stinking decision. You don't need to be James Bond. Just play the hand, play the hand, play the hand. A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time.